This is episode eight of Among the Ancients with Emily Wilson, a podcast series from the London Review of Books. I'm Thomas Jones, an editor at the LRB. Emily Wilson is Professor of Classical Studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Hello, Emily, and thanks for joining me. Hi, Tom. Today we're talking about Lucretius and his philosophical poem, De Rerum Natura, of the nature of things. Lucretius lived in the first century BC, a contemporary more or less of Catullus, who we discussed last time. They're a different kind of poet from Catullus, and as far as we can tell from his poem, which is all we have to go on, a different kind of person too, that they may also have more in common than first appears, as we may get to a little bit later. But first we talk about the kind of poem that De Rerum Natura is. It's six books of more than a thousand lines each, well more in some cases, and those lines are hexameters, the metre of epic verse. But it isn't an epic poem, Emily, is it? Well, in a certain sense, it is. I mean, it has a sort of grandeur and a constant gesturing towards the sublime and towards telling a narrative about everything. And also a narrative which, like the Iliad, is all about warfare and conflict, but then also is about how to achieve a state of some kind of calm or reconciliation. But more obviously, it's in the tradition of didactic poetry which traces back to Hesiod's Works and Days and Theogony, those two archaic poems from roughly the same era as the Homeric poems, which focus on what exactly you should do in your life and how, how to live a good life, which is part of what Works and Days is about. In, in the case of Hesiod, the, the answer to how, how to live a good life is has, has to do a lot with farming and when to crop, plant your crops, whereas Lucretius's answer for how to get, live a good life is somewhat different. Hesiod's other poem, The Theogony, focuses on the, the births and myths about the gods and how did the gods come into being. Lucretius's poem is also about the gods and the origins of the universe, but of course his vision of theology is very different from the traditional Greco-Roman idea that the Olympian deities actually intervene in human life. In the Epicurean model, they just sit quietly at the end, edge of the universe, chilling out and not doing anything. There are these, these Greek precursors who wrote didactic certain philosophical poems but in the ancient greek tradition prose had become the medium of, of philosophy that plato aristotle there was philosophers there had become this division that philosophers wrote in prose was lucretius the first person to that we know of to go back to using verse to write philosophy I mean, partly it depends what you count as philosophy, right? But it's, it's certainly true that Lucretius is um, engaging with earlier philosophical poets, most specifically with Empedocles, who, who was the one who focused on the four elements and wrote a philosophical poem about it. There was also Parmenides, who did a, in a way, quite, quite obscure poem about what is and what, what is not. So there the were Greek antecedents for writing philosophical poetry. But if but Plato and Aristotle write prose, in Plato's case, it's very poetic prose, but it's prose. And it's definitely defining itself within a very different tradition from the uh, either epic or didactic poetry traditions. And Empedocles and Parmenides were pre-Socratic. They were pre-Socratic, yes. So they're much, much, much earlier. Um, maybe, maybe we should also just mention that didactic poetry had 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 another sort of flowering in the Hellenistic period, in the period when um, Epicurus himself was coming up with his philosophical system. People like Callimachus and his contemporaries were also interested in how can you use this sort of writing exercise of pretending to teach somebody something in poetry, even if you don't actually care about teaching them teaching the actual specific thing. It's a good writing exercise to set yourself the project of write a whole poem about snakes. And in, in De Rerum Natura, Lucretius more than once talks about why he's writing in poetry, doesn't he? Maybe we, if we listen to a, a bit of it now. This is the famous honey on the cup simile from, um, from Lucretius in Alicia Stolling's translation. I wonder in the uncharted country of the muses, None before me has set foot here, and I thrill to come upon springs untouched by any lips and here to slake my thirst. I joy to pluck strange flowers for a glorious wreath, the first whose brow the muse is ever crowned with blossoms from this spot. Why? Because I teach great truths and set out to unknot the mind from tight strictures of religion and since I write of so darkling a subject in a poetry so bright, tinging with the muses' grace all subjects that I touch. Nor is my method to no purpose, 
Doctors do as much. Consider a physician with a child who will not sip a disgusting dose of wormwood. First, he coats the goblet's lip all around with honey, sweet, blonde stickiness. That way to lure the gullible youth to taste it and to drain the bitter cure. The child's duped, but not cheated. Rather, put back in the pink, that's what I do. Since those who've never tasted of it think this philosophy's a bitter pill to swallow and the throng recoils from it, I want to coat this physic in rich song, to kiss it, as it were, with the sweet honey of the muse, so I might keep you focused on my verses by that ruse, while you drink in the nature of things and know it of good use. So a bit like Mary Poppins. <laughs> exactly, a spoonful of sugar. Um, although he, he also, elsewhere in, in the poem, he says that honey is bitter as well as sweet. So there is a... There's a whole lot know, of so complexity, he, yes. There's a whole lot of sort of question of exactly how separate also is the philosophy from the poetry, really. And it's... and. People have have taken different positions about how much does he actually think um, that he can scoop out the poetic elements, and could you could you actually drink pure wormwood, or is actually Epicureanism more poetic than you might have thought? Is that part of what he's trying to show us? And maybe we should talk a bit now about what the teachings of Epicurus were, of what the, this philosophy that the Lucretius followed was. Yes, and there is a, I mean, to the extent that Ep Epicurean has a meaning in modern English. It tends to mean liking the good life and yes. eating and drinking and pleasure. But that's not really what Epicurus taught, is it? It's it's not pleasure in the sense of going like in the sense of hedonism. So small e Epicureanism, meaning seeking out um, fancy things to eat and drink and a life of luxury, is absolutely antithetical to ancient Epicureanism. Ancient Epicureanism began, um, as the name suggests, with this guy called Epicurus, who lived in the 4th to 3rd centuries BCE in the Hellenistic age. And like several philosophical schools of that era, the central goal is to achieve um, peace of mind or calm. Epicurus thought the way to achieve peace of mind or calm is to live a life of great moderation. So if you're um, if you're very hungry, then a crust of bread and a drink of water is going to make you feel great. Whereas drinking too much is not going to make you feel great. So it's not pleasurable to drink too much. It's pleasurable to live a moderate life, stay out of trouble, stay out of politics, lathe biosas, um, live your life in a quiet, hidden sort of way, was one of the maxims of Epicureanism. And they focused on pleasure and were much mocked for it in, in antiquity because people sort of made this association between hedonism and Epicureanism, which Epicurus Curus himself and all of his followers insisted was wrong because that's not the kind of pleasure that, that they were aiming for. The pleasure that they were aiming for is absence of pain. And they had, had the idea, which is, I think, essential for understanding the poem, that some of the worst kinds of pains that afflict us are false fears and false beliefs. So if you're terrified of death all the time or anxious about things that don't actually exist, if you're afraid of the gods or afraid, afraid of being cursed or afraid you're going to die, then you're not in, in a state of pleasure. You're constantly in pain because you're always worried. Whereas if you can achieve a true awareness of the actual state of the universe, which is material and composed of atoms and has this element of randomness, then you can just accept that's just how the universe is and I feel quite calm and I can just sit in the garden and hang out and have my crust of bread and I feel okay. The question of the garden is important, isn't it? That the space, the idea of the garden is the, is the ideal place to be. Yes. And so, so it matters that it's not um, a place in the sort of bustling city centre. And I think that the symbolism of a garden, which Im implies a place of withdrawal and a place where you can pay attention to the natural world and spend time with a coterie of people that you, that, who all share this, this same belief, but you don't, you don't get caught up in the rat race. You withdraw from that and you focus on the natural world and on just living this life of moderation. Yes, so, friend, so friendship is very important to Epicurus. Friendship Although is Lucretius very important does... to Epicurus, yes. And yeah. um, he's, he seems to have, have said even that one might die for a friend, even though in general um, Epicureanism implied an idea that you want to live as much as possible and the whole um, Roman political obsession with committing suicide to show your virility <laughs> wasn't, a, wasn't a big element of Epicureanism. But if you were going to kill yourself, it wouldn't be for politics, it would be for a friend. 
Thanks for listening to this extract from Among the Ancients, a close reading series from the London Review of Books. To listen to the full episodes and all our other close reading series, sign up to our close reading subscription. Go to lrb.me forward slash close readings or click on the link in the description.